Hello once again audience and welcome back to Dominations with Christopher. As per request, I am putting up a video on how to trap. Um, what do you need to know in regard to traps? If you are industrial, upgrade your mines. Uh, the reason that I say this is because the damage per mine goes through the roof on a per damage one. I think it's an increase of about 6,000 uh, per landmine. So that's one type of trap is a landmine. The next one of course is an ambush trap. Uh, the hidey hole boys. They're level five at the industrial age. There's four ambushers and they're shock infantry. Little range of two there. Um, now, the last type is the barbed wire. Some fundamental notes in regard to traps. Uh, you want to place your traps in order to specifically isolate various troop types. Uh, thus, to mean if you're going to put down barbed wire, you're going to want to put it where people might rally or troops might wander into it. Uh, the other note um, is that I place them in order to actually prevent people or give people a hard time when they're trying to destroy stuff. Uh, landmines, on the other hand, are literally to destroy stuff. Uh, thus to mean, usually you focus on trying to get the weaker units, so such as infantry or uh, supply trucks or anything of that nature. Uh, when somebody rallies, you want those types of faster troops to be wandering over top of landmines. Uh, Another note in regard to, well not another note, there's probably tons of notes in here. Barbed wire. I like to keep my barbed wire uh, surrounded by a couple of ambush traps. It's no sense in slowing somebody down uh, if they're slowed down and attacking whatever that thing is. You want to distract them as well. Uh, so the more you can throw at them while they're in the barbed wire, the better off you are. As you can see on my base here, come at me bro. Um, I've got my tank gun, I've got, you know, the machine gunner, I've got uh, just in ranges that mortar there, I've also got another machine gunner, so if you were to rally there to try and get the quick victory on my uh, town center, you're, you'd probably have a bad time. There'd be more than a few things that were coming at you, um, which is what you want. Uh, range. Range is extremely important. If you are protecting said thing, you need to understand that the range of uh, a cannon is five. So, and that's your heavy hitters. That's what you're relying on to actually get you through a base, or you should be anyways. If you're not, then, uh, I don't know, share your thoughts down below. But the range of a, an artillery or a cannon or howitzer is five. So, what that means is that when they rally or do a forced rally or even start shooting at something, they're going to be five spaces away. So uh, in regard to your war base, what this means, I'm not going to show you my war base. Uh, I've got a new one. Maybe we'll showcase it tomorrow after we sell it, see how it does. But what this means in regard to protecting your town center, if that's what you're focused on saving, is that you've got one, two, three, four, five. So, quite literally, you would want to put your barbed wire underneath a gate. This gate right here. Uh, and you want to put it where troops are actually going to naturally rally and go to in order to nail that town center. Or whatever it happens to be that you're protecting. Um, barbed wire is very good. Get it up as high as you can. Uh, I think this one goes... Well, no. So, in the industrial age, the max you can get is 50% damage reduction and 50% slower uh, invaders. Um, what else can you say in regard to them? When they blow up, barbed wire does cover a space of two. The activation range of this, you can see, is about, oh, I don't know, one, two, three, we'll say four. When it blows up, it does cover a two and in thereabouts. Um, it is beneficial at times to stick it in spots like this because if you're like me with your war somebody will rally in here and people are like oh well that's kind of wasted but if somebody rallies there after this has fallen in order to nail my town center once that blows up it will cover a portion of that fallen building or where it used to be and it, thus it will slow a certain percentage of its troops so say for instance if you have um, 
Let's see here. If you have barbed wire on either side of a building, we'll just drag this one down here. And we'll put this barbed wire here. And we'll grab this barbed wire and we'll stick it there. If you do something like this, and this falls and somebody rallies right where that used to be, so like that for example, the, both of these barbed wire, if they are tripped, will encompass almost all of that middle space. All of this middle ground here will be encompassed by both of those barbed wire, thus reducing his, uh, his speed and his damage reduction. It pretty much brings them down to being like bombards, if not a little bit less, uh, when they're standing on maxed industrial age barbed wire. Um, and look, I'm giving away free food. I think that about sums it up. Uh, watch your replays. I know the war replays are not available. Uh, get advice from others, but remember, range of five, if your goal is to actually prevent them from killing something, if you're looking to hit them up where they rally to, uh, try and pick those parts out, out of your base. Another thing you can do is copy your war base to your regular base in order to see the replays on it. Uh, you'll notice that there's specific drop points for people. There's pathing that people take, and there's also pathing that uh, in any base you can kind of follow along with as far as the supply trucks, as far as the artillery and regular troops. Um, that's all I've got for now. Uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful day. If you found this video useful, please click like and subscribe down below. And all, as always, uh, don't forget, keep your sticks on the ice. Have a good time.